Greetings internet, it's Monica and today I am coming to you from a chilly October evening to do the cozy autumn book tag. I'll be sure to link the original creator in the description box below and I'm so excited to do this tag because it has such lovely fun questions for the autumnal season which is so many people's favorite time of year. I feel like every time there's a new season I'm like this one is my favorite. So. <laughs> I'm trying not to say that it's my favorite, but I do love autumn. I especially growing up on the East Coast, I just feel like it's full of so many fun and festive traditions. So yeah, I'm excited to dive into all of these questions. So the first question for this tag is what book always reminds you of autumn? And for this, I actually have two answers. One is an old favorite, one is a new favorite. So an old favorite is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. This is sort of like the original dark academia novel. I feel like it's the one that the entire aesthetic is really based off of. I mean I'm sure there are other dark academia novels that came before this one but this is sort of the big one that I think of as sort of like launching the genre. This is a literary kind of thriller. Honestly I hesitate to call it a thriller because I don't think it is particularly thrilling. <laughs> it is very much so a character novel. It's, it's a novel of ideas and it's much, it's very much so like a slow burn. So this book is set on a New England college campus and it follows a group of students who become obsessive about this professor that they, this eccentric professor that they are learning from and their studies within the classics. This book really explores a lot of the ideas around like the corruptibility of humanity and I just honestly like the writing is just so beautiful and for me reading this and I usually dip into it at least a little bit every autumn I feel like ever since I first read it it just reads like fall you know it has this like cerebralness that I just sort of a tribute to autumn. I think it's, you know, that academic, wannabe academic in me that just gravitates to this book. But yeah, this book, every every autumn I find myself dipping back into it. Maybe not doing a full reread because it is a little bit of an endeavor, uh, but at least dipping back into it and sort of finding some of my favorite sections again. Uh, so yeah, always love uh, The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I might actually do a full reread this year because I haven't fully reread it um, in a really long time. Another book, a new addition to this list is If I Had Your Face by Frances Shaw. This is a novel that I've talked about quite a bit here on my channel. It is a novel that follows four Korean girls living in Seoul. They all live in an, in an apartment complex together and it's basically just it follows each of their lives and I, I just fell in love with these girls so much and they're friendships or not even friendships but the way that they're connected I thought was so beautifully done um, but this one reminds me of autumn because a huge chunk of it actually takes place do during Chuseok which is actually today the day that I'm filming this although I think this is going up a week or so after uh, but basically it's kind of like Korean Thanksgiving it's a harvest festival and it's a time when especially in Korea people leave the cities and they go back to their hometowns. Yeah, it's a big traditional holiday and I loved reading about that pilgrimage within this novel. I thought it was just so interesting to see it for, in this very like modern way, you know, where it is these like girls from Seoul and they're having to go back to like this town that they have no real love for and really only like trauma experiences there and them going back to it at one point in the book was just very interesting. And so for that reason, this book is one that I definitely think I will be looking at to looking to possibly reread in future autumns to come. So the next question is what is your favorite autumnal book cover? And I am going to go with Fake Blood by Whitney Gardner. This is a novel about a boy who is trying to impress a girl and so he pretends to become a vampire for her because she's really into vampires and if that's not love I don't know what is. <laughs> um, but yeah this is a graphic novel that I haven't read yet uh, which is why it's here in the favorite cover section and not in a recommended book section so I can't say if I think it's worth reading but I think the cover is just so fun and cute because it's this boy like looking at himself with the 
the, the fangs in. I just think it's very cute and Halloween-ish. I don't really have many like Halloween books to be honest because I'm not really a scary reads kind of gal. <laughs> the next question is what is your favorite autumnal drink and it's actually what I'm currently drinking right now. I did just realize that I'm currently in strawberry pajamas drinking out of a strawberry mug sitting on my strawberry bedding so someone has a problem. <laughs> At least I'm not drinking my strawberry tea because that was an option, but for autumn I have just been obsessed with this drink. Basically it is a chai latte with pumpkin spice creamer in it and I don't usually like creamer. I usually avoid it because I think it tastes bad and <laughs> just like chemically, but Chobani released a oat milk pumpkin spice creamer that is just so good it's limited edition and that breaks my heart because it's amazing and i want it to be around forever but yeah it just makes anything any beverage so good so autumnal but it's especially especially good in chai i know that this is not traditional by any means the chai that i use is also like a powder mix <laughs> which again i know is trash but I know I like I recognize that it's trash and sometimes I want the trash thing you know sometimes I that's just where I'm at when I want that sort of Starbucks experience but at home I will use chai powder mix and add a little bit of hot water and then I use my milk frother to froth up some milk some oat milk and I add that in and then I add a bit of the pumpkin spice creamer and it is just like autumn in a cup it's so good, so warm. I love it. So yeah, this has definitely been an obsession for me. I've been drinking it way too often for as much sugar is probably in that creamer. Question four, do you prefer to read late at night or early in the morning? I wish I could say I was a morning reader, but no, I'm definitely a late at night girl. I just, I don't sleep very often. Honestly, I feel recently I haven't even been reading late at night. I've been up playing Catan and Among Us with friends like every single evening and I really need to start prioritizing reading again because I definitely, when I'm not reading, I feel like I, I can sense it, you know? Like I can feel the loss of something and I just feel like I perform better as a human when I am also reading. Like there's something about it that just helps me emotionally, mentally, I don't know what it is, but I definitely need to be better at prioritizing reading along with, of course, hanging out with friends. Uh, because I think that that's also really important right now to as much as I can hang out with people obviously all online by the way in case that's not clear social distancing is very important but yeah overall definitely a late night but yeah overall I am definitely a late night gal wish I wasn't wish I could wake up at 6 a.m. but that that's not my truth that's not me <laughs> Question five is Halloween is coming. What is a favorite spooky book? And again, I cheated and I have two answers for this. So the first one is a newer book for me and the second is an old fave. So for my newer pick, I'm going with Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. This is a ghost dark academia story. And dark academia, again, it's just dark academia is perfect for autumn. I don't know why. I think like for me, autumn just equals college. <laughs> an academia and like wearing sweaters and being smart <laughs> but I would highly recommend this one to anyone who maybe tried to read the secret history and just hated it maybe for because the characters just didn't, you didn't connect with them or the story just wasn't very inspiring which is all fair criticism like it's one of my favorite books but I also think all the criticism of it is legit um, <laughs> but if you struggled with the Secret History, I would highly recommend checking out Ninth House because I would like say it's kind of like a combination of The Secret History but with a dash of Veronica Mars where you have a character that you can actually root for with Alex Stern and she's just so badass and I just I loved her as a character, I loved her journey, I loved especially the way that this novel really explored the, the privilege and grossness of a lot of Ac the academic worlds and just how it is such a closed door boys club kind of an environment and I think that that this book 
in some ways explores like the negatives of academia in a lot more of an interesting way than The Secret History does. And plus, it's fantastical. We have ghosts. We have a snarky indie boy ghost who is one of my fave characters in this book. Um, and yeah, I just, I'm so excited for this series and to see where it goes from here. I feel like it's going to be a little while until the next one comes out, but even without that, this book definitely feels like its own complete story also, so I wouldn't let the fact that it's a series stop you from reading it. I definitely think you're fine picking it up without the second one being out yet. But yeah, I love this book so, so much, and I've, I've been wanting to reread it this season. Even though I shouldn't, I have so many books I need to read this season, but uh, I just want to reread Ninth House and like hang out with Alex Stern again because she is just the best character. I love her. An old favorite though is Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. This is one of my favorite Austen novels. I say that about every novel by Austen though. I've read all of her work, um, which I've read all of her work, and I just I love everything by her. I love her wit and her characters. Uh, but Northanger Abbey is really fun. It's actually a really good like introductory book to Austen, I feel like, because it is so fun. This is her take on gothic, on the sort of gothic novel trend that was happening at the time, and it's her satire, satirizing, satirizing? It's her satire of the gothic novel. So we follow Catherine Moreland, who is this girl who just loves novels. She loves gothic novels. And she ends up meeting this boy and she ends up going back to his manor nor or his abbey, I guess, Northanger Abbey with him and his sister. And he just, she just starts suspecting their father of just the most dastardly of deeds. <laughs> and so it becomes this sort of spooky read of her just looking for scary, spooky things in every corner and suspecting it. But, um, you know, the novel sort of goes from there. I don't want to give anything away. I just love this one because it has all of those spooky vibes, but it also has that Jane Austen element of just intrigue and romance and fun and witty characters. And yeah, this is this is just such a fun novel. If you're looking to pick up a classic right now, I think this is a great pick. Question six is what is your ultimate comfort read? And for me, I'm sorry Lee Bardugo does get two spots in this tag, but it's Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. Um, I'm actually rereading this right now and just loving it. And I've read it, I've reread it a few times over the past few years. And I feel like every time I do, I leave it with something new and interesting about these characters and this world. And it just makes me so excited. The final book in the sort of Grisha universe is coming out. It's the second King of Scars book and Lee Bardugo has talked about it as like being sort of the series finale of the whole Grisha universe, which I am so stressed about. The book is going to destroy me. I, I can feel it considering how destroyed I was by King of Scars. But um, I love Shadow and Bone and I feel like it doesn't get as much love as I think it deserves. Like, yes, it is definitely a book of its time. Like, it sort of falls into a lot of those YA tropes that were popular at the, at the time. But I feel like she really does such interesting things with those tropes and really subverts a lot of them, especially the trope of having a really old man who is actually very hot and young looking fall fall in love with a young girl which was huge at the time that this book was released and she just does I think something very interesting there with that whole trope. I just I love her characters every time I read it I fall more and more in love with Mal as much as people much to everyone else's chagrin because I know people hate Mal but I don't care I love him I think he's an amazing character and this book just brings me so much comfort because I just have so much love for this whole series. Like it's just so good. It's such good fantasy and I love Lee Bardugo so I feel like every Lee Bardugo book brings me immense comfort. <laughs> Question seven is what is your favorite autumnal reading snack? And I don't know if I have like a favorite reading snack but one of my favorite like autumnal snacks is definitely Songpyeon which is a Korean rice cake. It's traditional during Chuseok which is like an autumn harvest festival holiday in Korea. I talked about it at the beginning of the video. Um, but yeah, it's traditional for that holiday, but you can eat it whenever. Uh, but yeah, I love, I, I love them. I think they're very 
tasty and they just remind me of autumn other than that I love buns with red bean like it's like a hot bun you know fresh out of the microwave which is not traditional but whatever just pretend <laughs> pretend I actually steamed it uh, but you know fresh out of the microwave just a hot steamed bun with red bean paste in it if you're not Asian you might not be familiar with red bean paste but it's like a sweet paste made out of red beans. I know that that might sound re weird if you're not Asian, but it's delicious. Trust me, it's so good and comforting and just like very hearty and filling. I love it. It's so good. Uh, but yeah, those are some of my favorite like autumn treats. Other than that, I love the standards, pumpkin pie, anything pumpkin spice, throw some cinnamon on something and I'm good to go. <laughs> The next question is what is your favorite autumnal candle and I don't have one as of right now. I wish I did. I really want a good like fireplace scent of the candle. Not too sweet but just like a good like I don't know fireplace scent. So if anyone has a recommendation my favorite perfume is by the fireplace uh, by Maison Margiela which I've just butchered their name. I'm so sorry. I've never actually bought a full size of it because it's so expensive, uh, but it's my favorite scent and I always start wearing it around this time of year and I wish I could get a candle of that and they used to make a candle for it. However, it's $60 or it was when it was a thing and that is not what I'm about to spend on a candle. <laughs> Literally lighting money on fire, but I love the scent. So if anyone has a good fiery scent, maybe a hint of vanilla, please let me know. I'm always on the lookout, but yeah, as of right now, I don't really have a favorite autumn scent. Probably the only candle I've been burning recently is this tobacco flower one from L'Apothecaire Co. I bought this at The Strand, and it has lasted like a really long time. I wouldn't call it autumnal though, it's, it's a little, it's definitely floral, uh, but it is very like moody smelling and just smells really good, so that's as good as it gets for me. Question nine, when you're not reading, what is your favorite autumnal activity? For me, I live again on the east coast and northeast of America, so I love leaf peeping, which is a phrase that sounds ridiculous, but it's basically just like looking at leaves as they turn colors, and I just think that autumn here is so beautiful. I love watching the leaves change and especially when you just have like a bunch of trees all together and it sort of looks like the side of a hill or something is like a blaze because it's so orange and beautiful and like when the sun hits it just right it's oh, so good it's so beautiful so I love that I love just walking around when the leaves are falling and then of course I love to watch Gilmore Girls every fall I feel like that's just a classic fall activity for many people, <laughs> but I just, it's so good. Uh, the last question is what is on your autumn reading list? And for me, I actually already uploaded a whole video where I talk about the books that I'm looking forward to reading this autumn. And I also filmed a video about all the books that are coming out this autumn and winter 2020 that I'm excited for. So if you would like to see either of those, I will be sure to link them in the description box below. Uh, but there is one book that I just recently picked up that I'm really excited to read, and that is The Scandalous Sisterhood of Prick Willow Place by Julie Berry. This is by the author of um, Lovely War, which is a novel that I, I know a lot of people on booktube really enjoyed. I thought it was good. It wasn't my favorite thing in the world, but it had some really great ideas and beautiful Beautiful, beautiful writing. So I have been excited to pick up a few more books by her and this one sounds so charming. It's a middle grade novel that takes place at a all-girls school and I think it's in like the Victorian era or something like that but I've heard it compared to Clue and that's basically an auto buy for me. Like as soon as something is given a Clue comparison I'm like yes I need it because I'm always on the hunt for, I don't know, something that makes me feel the same way that playing Clue or watching Clue makes me feel. So yeah, I'm really intrigued for this one. It just sounds very charming. And for me, I much prefer autumn reads that are more on the charming, spooky side versus the like horrific side. So this is definitely more my speed in the autumn. So I'm really excited for this one. But if you want to see the other books that I'm planning on reading or hoping to read, if I stop playing Among Us <laughs> every night, uh, then you can watch that video. 
but yeah that is the cozy autumn book tag i had so much fun answering these questions i would love to hear from you guys what some of your answers to these questions would be in the comments down below i'd also love to know do you say autumn or do you say fall i feel like i say a bit of both but i tend to prefer autumn i just like the way it sounds no other reason than that i'd love to know what you prefer let me know in the comments and i'll talk to you guys next time bye